the physical well being. We're going to do the how to guide. The how to. And and um, I'm going to refer to you in a lot of this. Dish it off to you because you're the expert. You have a company that does well being, physical well being. Yes. Yeah, um, a little bit of practical, why, why practical application. I, this is always curious, and and you've talked a little bit about it. But why did you call it expansion training? I believe that we manifested in human form to do three things. This is not a Dwayne idea. This comes from Abraham Hicks, but it resonates with me big time. We came to be free, to expand, and to enjoy it. Mm, that's so good, yes. That's why I manifested in human form. Right. I did not manifest to be afraid. I did not manifest right. to worry. I did not manifest to have anxiety attacks around money or to drown myself in a bottle. <laughs> it's not why I came to experience so true, life yes. on, on planet Earth. I, I, I came to expand, I came to be free, and I came to enjoy it. And I named the business expansion because that's inevitable. Whether I want to or not, I'm going to expand. So I want to be a deliberate creator. I want to have some deliberate action behind my expansion. If I am the creator of my world, not the victim mm. of my world, what am I creating? And you can create an expansion in your waistline. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Krispy Kremes and blueberry, the negative. blueberry <laughs> coffee cake will do that. Or you, can, uh, or you can create an expansion in increasing uh, your energy levels, increasing your mind, increasing the capacity to, to literally take up that sword and fight the demon. Yes. Uh, the, dragon the dragon of addiction. Um, so let's get into the how-to guide for physical well-being. Um, so I want to start off with how do we start? How do we start slow mm -hmm. in setting realistic goals? So let's get into the starting slow. Wonderful. Yeah. We don't want to be um, unrealistic with an approach. So I want my uh, approach to be grounded in reality. I know I need to do something. What does that something look like? Currently, I'm just sitting on the couch all day long. If I'm not sitting at work, I'm sitting on the couch. So starting small might look like three walks a week. I'm going to make a, a commitment, and a commitment is something I do whether I want to or not. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a commitment to myself, to the God consciousness inside of me. I'm going to go on three walks a week. Walk around the block, walk for five minutes, walk for ten minutes. Let that commitment expand. How do I feel while I'm walking? I'm probably going to feel like I'm going to die if I haven't done it in a while. And then let that grow, let that expand. Um, but very, very important to just incorporate some humility here. I'm not going to go do wind sprints for two hours, my first attempt. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm going to explode And my an heart. addict wants to do yes, that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they want to go all hard. Or nothing. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's also important, you know, we had a, a nice disclaimer last podcast. We'll do another one this one. But it's also important to remember that I really should get some, like, medical clearance to be mm -hmm. able to work out, especially if I'm planning to push myself in a, in a serious way. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm going to do, do, go do wind sprints, it's nice to know that I'm not going to have a heart attack. You were, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So we don't want to pretend to be medical practitioners. We don't want to right. give any, but we're not telling anybody what to do. You should always seek professional guidance and have doctor approved clearance in order mm -hmm. to work out and train. Uh, however, start where you're at. What it, what is you know like increasing intensity? So as you begin to feel better, as you begin to gain mental clarity, we talked about this the last podcast. So the first, this is kind of the how, the why with addiction. You need to watch. You need to stop this right now and go to the next podcast because this is if you short circuit to this one, you're just doing an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. Let me yeah. let me bypass all that and go right to. You know, that's addiction. <laughs> yeah, totally. So you're not going to understand what we're saying. In the, this is a two-part series. So this is the second part. So I encourage people to stop, listen to the first one, and you're going to get a lot. There's, there's a, a lot of help in that first one. Secondly, when you think about increasing intensity and duration, yeah, you know, yeah. like, like you start, like when you first starting off with a client mm -hmm. and you kind of have to like feel and see where they're at, what does intensity and duration look like? Yeah, that's, it's specific for each individual. Um, we like to call that the rapport stage. i got to get to know a client and where I could take them in their body. So you have to get to know yourself. You have to get to know where you can mm, take know you thyself. and your yeah. body. Yeah, it's ancient, ancient. So yeah. get to know yourself. 
if a walk is causing to me to be short of breath after 10 minutes, maybe tomorrow I'm going to try for 12. Right. And the day after that, I'm going to shoot for 14. Right. I walk for 14 minutes a day. And then that sense of accomplishment, that sense of I, I improved on myself. I mean, mm. you know, we, we got we <laughs> it's important to have a high aim. Yes. My aim is to improve my life, is to expand my capability, to expand my well-being. How good do I want to feel in my shoes, mm. in my own shoes, as good as I possibly can? Well, they had so many apps and stuff like that that you can hold yourself accountable. Yes, yes. Like if I want to get up to where I'm walking a mile. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to get up to where I'm walking three miles or five miles or whatever it may be. They have these things that you can check every day and it'll remind you. So there's so many tools out there, a lot of free tools. You can put up a checklist yes. that you can print out, you know, at work. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of free things that you can do. And I gl- I'm glad that you started with walking because I think it's so important. Like for everyone should be walking. I mean, we're made to walk. Mm-hmm. If you go, like you were in Barcelona, um, whether wherever you go, I've been to lots of places in in Europe, wherever you go in Europe, people walk to walk their dinner. Everywhere. They yeah. walk after their dinner, which is the number one thing you do to knock a glucose spike down. Yeah. Is to, but you know, so they can eat use. like all different types of foods. They don't overindulge. They're not obese. They have great ingredients. And then they're walking around constantly. We don't mm. walk anywhere. No, no. You can get a double cheeseburger sitting down in your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't even need to stand up. Yes. Yeah. In order, in order to partake in my addiction so with addiction intensity and duration i want us to understand this because let's say you walk 12 minutes and then you go to 14 and you feel really tired and shitty after the 14 minutes because you've really strained yourself the self-talk that you have you should be saying great job you went from 12 to 14 not i'm a piece of shit fuck this walking right you know right, a, a, right, 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 yeah. because <clears throat> I always say I'm going to be harsh when I say this because, you know, I face different addictions too. When I'm in my addiction, I like to take the easy way out and I'm a quitter. Mm-hmm. I'm a fucking cheesy piece of shit quitter. And I, my brain will find ways for me to quit. Mm-hmm. It'll be like, well, you, you only did 14 minutes. You're a piece of shit. You know, like, why even try today? You know, why don't you just have that cheeseburger? You know? So how do you get over that? evil voice that's in your head i'll use the word evil the evil voice in your head it's not wanting you to have that intensity and duration yeah you know one tool that we use is um you know we talked about in a previous podcast about walking through fear mm, yes usually i'm just it feels uncomfortable because i don't know what's on the other side of that mm, yes i don't know what's on the other side of this 14 minute yes, exercise really good. probably my death I don't want to go through this because I'm probably going to die. And that's, that's a delusion. If I that's, use this leg machine, I'm going to yeah. break my knee. <laughs> yeah, I get absolutely. that sometimes. Me too. There's a lot of fear in the gym. Often in the gym, I'll pray, God, relieve me of my fear. Yeah. God, relieve me of my fear. So that's a nice one to help um, curve the itty-bitty shitty committee I got going on in my head. <laughs> it's like this entire so good, yes. group of committee is telling me, no, 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 you the can't possibly do this. Don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and, and really, that's just my resistance to change. That's just my resistance to evolve. That's my resistance to face the dragon. The dragon's scary. Mm-hmm. I don't want to face the dragon. But if I'm in a recovery journey, I'm also on a hero's journey. You need to be that hero. You right. need to enter the wilderness You've never been on that 14-minute walk. You haven't been in that wilderness. It's supposed to be scary. Often, fear is like a curtain. I, my, my ego and my brain says it's like a brick wall. You can't get through this. And that's not true. A nice, a, a softer analogy for us is it's like a curtain. I can get through a curtain. Mm-hmm. I might not know what's on the other side of it, but I can get through it. Yeah, one of the beautiful things that I did that really helped me out with the walking uh, was when, when I had uh, dogs. Because mm-hmm. there's oh, like lovely. a commitment. Lovely. Because when I saw how they changed and how their attitude totally changed from just being in the house all day long and going crazy to I started taking them for walks in the morning and at night mm-hmm. and saw how much more peaceful they were, that they slept better, that they were just happier dogs. I was like, well, if that's happening to them, that's probably happening to me. So I'm just going to commit to twice a day and i would put a podcast in and it was crazy so this was really funny so at the end of that year that i did that everybody was talking about like spotify came out with a thing where how many hours 
Mm, yeah. You listen to music, but it also counted the podcast. Cool. So, and, and people were putting it on, like, uh, we were talking about it at work. And they're like, Jason, what's yours? And I didn't even look. And I looked on there, and I had thousands of hours. Wow. And they're like, what do you just listen to music all the time? I was like, no, I listen to an hour podcast in the morning. And I listen to an hour podcast, 45-minute hour podcast, in, in, in all about all different types of self-improvement, spiritual. Yes. Yes. Physical well-being, you know, all, there's so many, there's so much free material out there nowadays. Yeah, the education that's available to us. Yeah, while you're listening to this podcast, make it a point to walk. We give you 45 minutes an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, and we're in alignment on this big time, Jay. A huge part of my spiritual development I've done with spiritual talks, podcasts, whatever it may be, YouTube, YouTube in my ears. Yes. While I'm on the on the bike. Yeah. Cycling or on the stairs, doing doing a stair mill or or going for a run, and like, you can buy a bike on Facebook Marketplace. Two hundred fifty bucks. That's what you was, you bought a nice the, one. It was the best two hundred fifty dollars I ever spent in my life. How many hours have you been on that bike since you bought it? Thousands. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. I'd be very interested in in. But every morning you you're really disciplined with that. Seven days a week. Every morning you get up, do twenty thirty minutes of cardio. And you put spiritual, like the first thing in the morning, you're getting your blood going, the brain, the oxygen in the blood. So beautiful, bro. And then next thing you know, you've got affirmations you're saying, you've got spiritual teachings. Yes. How, what a day. Exactly. I'm setting the tone for the mm. day. Coming right out of deep sleep, where I believe we are connected to source. We're touching mm. source in yes. deep sleep, dreamless sleep. We go back home to source. I'm coming right out of that. And entering a physical, spiritual practice for 20 or 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes recently because of this fitness challenge we're doing. <laughs> I'm not going to let Jason win, you know. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, it sets the tone for the day. I'm plugging into spirit mm, when that. I'm most susceptible. Yes. My brain is most susceptible to the vibration I'm going to be at because I just came right out of source. So I'm setting the bar pretty high. With so this, you go, with this you, you're teaching. drinking your coffee, your wife comes in, one of your kids come in, you've been tapped into source. Instead of being like, oh, this is an irritant, oh, fuck this, you know, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. negative, addictive personality that we have. Yes. That, that the fool, the jester, the idiot, yes. you know, now you're walking in source. So it's like, good morning. You know, I um, hope you had, you know, a good sleep or whatever, you yeah. know, here's some coffee. Let so me be wonderful. of service oh, right so off the wonderful. bat. You know, yeah. that's what I do. I make myself, when I make coffee, I always give my girlfriend the thing first because I am so selfish. Mm-hmm. I would look at the coffee and be like, well, she kind of had two cups. <laughs> you know, and I had, we do, we talked about this, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so I better hurry up and I'll, I'll grab the thing and fill my cup even if I didn't want to just to make sure I got mine. Yeah. When I have pounds of coffee from Costco <laughs> and I have a coffee maker that I could turn around. So a lot of times I'm making another one. Yeah. Yeah, and so I'll make some more, and there's probably plenty in there now from, you know. But it's so silly. Having this physical practice and then increasing the intensity, increasing the duration, it encourages consistency. Absolutely. And that's what you need more than anything as an addict. Yeah, absolutely. Not consistency in drinking, but. No, no, consistency in rewiring my brain and creating new habits. I believe, we believe, that the consistency is powerful enough mm. to rewire my brain. Yes. I no longer have to have the selfish, fearful thought of pick up that bottle. That's what you need to get through this. Mm. I've gone through some hard shit in recovery. I've gone through deaths. I've gone through serious breakups. I'm the, I, I'm the only guy that's ever gotten divorced before he got married. <laughs> 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 Lawsuits and, and all, all whatever, kinds of stuff, all, yeah. whatever, you know, life happens. And I didn't drink through any of that. However... I had spiritual practices that helped me deal with those uncomfortable feelings. Mm -hmm. The gym was a serious part of those spiritual practices. Going to the gym is a nice form of therapy. I get to get those emotions that are uncomfortable and I don't want to have out. Yes, I tell that to the clients all the time. Take it out on the weights. You're mad right now? You're angry right now? Take it out on the weights. Yeah, it's so good. It's better than taking it out on my family. Oh, 100%. Taking it out on the dog. Or some stupid Zoom call that you have. Yes. I've done that. You or know, in or, traffic. I'm going to take it out in traffic. Yeah, you've helped me with that. Where I even have, like, sitting right here right now, I have all of these little crystals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're hearts. Like, she just got yeah. me this one. I will literally sit here and hold this heart. 
And so, and, and I'll get what resonates with me when I'm on the Zoom call because I'm just sitting here like this when I do a Zoom call with my, because we do, we're a tech company, so we do a lot of Zoom calls. And, and maybe I need the big heart because I really got to, <laughs> this meeting is one that I need to. But I'm holding this and the intention's there. Yes. And, and, and this is something that I want to talk about is when we're incorporating exercise in our daily routine that we make it non-negotiable part of our day. Wonderful. Because when you negotiate as an addict, you're good at that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what's the negotiation going to be like? <laughs> well, not today. You did good yesterday. It was pretty, <laughs> you know, you don't need to work so hard. You've been, re- you've been really trying, and, and I know you deserve to rest. Yeah, you deserve this yeah, yeah. Danish uh, oh, yes. pastry. Yes, you, yeah. you deserve. You, you've been working so hard. Go ahead and have the carrot cake. That little devil on the shoulder, that, that's, that's your friend when you're an addict. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, like, scheduling specific times, and I think this is why, we'll get into activities here in a second, but I think this is why it's so important to have a trainer. Because mm. my consistency would not be there. If I didn't have a trainer, my consistency would not be there. No. Because I, I, I have to have the consistency, or else, if I fall off the wagon, I fall off the wagon. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I fall and hit my head, and... <laughs> I'm in the ditch. I'm all the way done. A horse is going to trample me. The wagon's going to go over me. It's bad when I fall off the wagon. So (laughs) I need consistency so I don't. And and people will spend $100 going out to a meal, not think anything of it. Mm, You know, I I did a meal the other day. I mean, there was a lot of people involved, and I paid for it. But it was almost $300. Yeah. You know, and I I had a great time, and it was like, but writing a $200 check to to a trainer for the month, People are like, oh, my God, that's almost a car payment. But look how much money you spent going out to eat and all the slow suicide you gave yourself with all the stupid yeah. food you ate. Yeah, very all good. The, you know, I talked to somebody the other day. They don't even make a lot of money. And I was in their office, and they had gotten, it was here locally, and they had gotten Uber Eats sent to them. Yeah. Which is like triple, double the price by the time yeah. you give a tip, it's, by the time. Yeah. And it's convenient. I get it. But I'm like, how much do you think you spend every day they get? Mm. They pick a restaurant and they get Uber Eats. That's and they wild. just eat junk food, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, how much do you think? So McDonald's turned into $30 <laughs> for a lunch. <laughs> yep. Which is the silliest thing ever. Because I can remember you could eat at McDonald's. If you don't kill yourself, you might as well do it cheaply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The 99 cents cheeseburgers. I still, I could, I could get four burgers for mm-hmm. $4. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and, and it's so silly. I was like, so you're spending 20 to $50 a day every day for lunch. That's wild. Five days a week. I was like, let's add that up. Yeah. I was like, you know, you could afford a personal trainer. Easily. You could meal prep and afford a personal trainer. So if we average $30 a day, let's just go. What, what would no, no, if you spend $50 a day for 30 days, it's $1,500. Plus, plus, you're not counting the times you go out to eat because you're too tired once you get home. Yes, yes, yes. You, yes. Count, you count all that. It's, a lot of people are spending 500 to to $1,000 a month in unnecessary food. Exactly right. Yeah. And I, we'll get into nutrition, yeah. but you can afford a trainer. Yeah. One of the biggest budgeting items I have, period, is my nutrition. Mm-hmm. I'm willing, I, I have a specific type of lifestyle I want to maintain. And that nutrition, that purposeful eating, mm-hmm. not wasting money on, on Uber Eats or Grubhub or whatever it may be, or not going out, you know, dinners. Uh, so let's say an average meal is $17 at a restaurant. I'm going to do that three times a day. It's like one pack of chicken from the grocery store mm-hmm. is $13. Yes. And that feeds me for three days. Yes. So it's an easy budgeting item for me. You started with the consistency. Mm-hmm. The most successful people I know are consistent. They do the same shit every day. Even do if they think, like it or not. They do, do you think I got good by accident? Yeah. No, I got good with repetition. Mm -hmm. So part of this repetition, part of this consistency is my commitment to not die drunk, is my commitment to not live this addictive lifestyle. It doesn't have to be alcoholism. I don't want to die from my obesity. I don't want to die from my smoking. I don't want to die from my lack of presence with women and now I'm just chasing whoever I can and, and my unconsciousness leads me to death very quickly. So part of my handshake commitment with the universe is consistency. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to feel better. Come to find out what it takes to feel better is repetition. Yes. Of positive yes. acts of, of positive behaviors. 
this is going to improve my life today and it's going to improve my life tomorrow. It's like the meta game. Mm-hmm. It's like you want to get picked for dodgeball, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a game. But the meta game is you want to get picked and you want to get picked tomorrow. Yes. So how do I play the game so that I'm always involved? Yes. I'm always included in the game, in this game of life. And it always seems overwhelming in the beginning. I always tell people when I hire them, it's like you're going to feel like you're going to want to quit. You're going to feel like you don't know this stuff. But I am going to talk to you six months, a year from now, and I'm going to bring this up, which I do. And you're going to have do this job with your eyes closed. It's boring. Mm. You're looking for another job because it's so boring. (laughs) But in the beginning, you think it's like, it's like you're at the point now, and I always tell you this, I still struggle going to the gym. And luckily I have a trainer. But you're like, there's no struggle in you to go to the gym. No, I love it. It's just a a natural, normal part of my day. I know that I'm going to go. However, it's ingrained in me because that's when I'm tapping source. That's when I'm tapping back into source. I love... Touching home base. Mm. I love getting on that stationary bike. I love plugging into God and praying while I cycle, praying while I'm on the stairs. It's extremely beneficial for my life, for my lifestyle, for how I treat others. Mm -hmm. I'm better as soon as I get off that bike. I'm not so nasty. And I want to get into this daily routine a little bit more, whether it's early in the morning like you like to do, Mm -hmm. whether it's during lunch break, now, I've seen people do, and, and if you have an office, let's say you have an office and you're like an office type person, you can buy one of those bikes on Facebook Marketplace and put it in your office. Mm. I've seen that. Yeah. Like, I, I have a friend of mine who has a treadmill in his office, and he walks the walking, the, the stand-up desks, yep. which I've been thinking about getting one, um, but the stand-up desks to be able to just sit there and stand, and they have them that move. Yeah. yeah and they're wife, like 200 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. My wife has one. Yeah. And she, she could stand and work. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's I need to do that. Is, I've been thinking about that a lot. I need to just, I get into like, I think you, oh, get, them so that, expensive. you can get those yeah. at Costco also. Yes, yeah, exactly. I need to take the time to, so, but lunch breaks, I know somebody who for years has walked on lunch breaks and they're thin. Yeah. Imagine that. Interesting how that and works. And they enjoy food. <laughs> yeah. But they're thin. Yeah. And all they do is five days a week, they walk, but they walk for like 45 minutes, but they've worked themselves up to 45 minutes an hour. And that's what they do for their lunch break. And then they eat at their desk, you know, regular mm-hmm. time or whatever mm-hmm. after, but they do like a fasted walk. Nice. Yeah. You know, so it's perfect for them. So consistency is the key to reaping the benefits of physical. And we talked about that. So now I want to choose into an activity and this is where people forget when you're an addict, you think that you have to do something horrific to get better. And we've talked about this for ourselves. I need to struggle. It needs to be horrible. Yes. It needs to be yes. shitty. I want to, Challenge that. And material talks about this. Choose activities you enjoy. Find an activity that spiritually resonates with you. Wonderful. Yeah, so powerful. Snowboarding for me, I'm so connected to source. I'm in the present moment. That should be the first thing you buy all year. Yeah, my past. More than than you having apartments, more than you you (laughs) buying doors, the number one thing you should buy every year is is the pass. You should be the first in line to get the pass. I feel so that's your, connected. It's my, one of my zones yes. of genius. However, when I'm done snowboarding, I'm drenched. Like, my winter jackets are, are sweat through. That's awesome. They're so... And you didn't feel soaked. like it was, wor- it was exercise at all? No, it's just pure See, joy. that's pure joy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's... If you can enjoy the activity, it's even better. Some people are swimming. Some swimming, people hiking. Frisbee. Yes, they Frisbee's have that a thing now. Basketball yeah. can be fun for some people. Mm-hmm. Golf. Mm-hmm. Golf is a big one. Yeah. I didn't realize how hard it is. It's taxing. It's like a mini marathon. Well, if, it, if you do 18 holes, how many miles is that? You're walking like all afternoon. Courses are like 7,000 yards. Mm-hmm. Average, whatever. Uh, maybe it's yoga. Mm, getting into a yoga class. Wonderful. That's a beautiful practice. I mean, that, if you have back problems... Yoga is like the number one thing you can do. You did a lot of that. Yeah, I've done a lot of yoga, and I, I still do. Uh, but anything that you can do that's routine that holds you accountable. Yeah, so, I'm, yeah I'm finding what resonates with you. So routine, accountable, and it resonates with me. I would, I, I've, I've seen a friend of mine done this, and this worked great in her yoga class. She's like, I'm going to commit to being here unless I have a vacation. And she tells the, the yoga instructor this. And I know the yoga instructor and her. She's, she tells the yoga instructors, like, well, I'm going to sign a contract that I made with you that I'm going to be here every Tuesday and Thursday night. 
If I don't, whatever nights I miss is 20 bucks I owe you cash. And she's like, no, 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 no. She's like, no, no, no. We're going to sign this because you're going to hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. You're my yoga instructor. You're going to hold me accountable. Yeah. And I will have to give you the money. So is it worth $20? Sometimes it is to her. Is it worth $20 to for miss. me not? Yeah. And so she's like, do you have many classes I've gone to because I don't want to give her 20 bucks? Majority. Or I got to run to the ATM, <laughs> get some money out. It's because I need to. I have to give it to her the next class. That's wonderful. So it's on the sh- it's it's on the sheet. So wow. find something you enjoy and then give yourself an accountability. However, you, maybe you can't afford mm-hmm. private classes. Maybe it's martial arts. You know, Joe Rogan talked about that. He was he was he was he has a very he talks about this all the time in his podcast. He has a very addictive personality, mm-hmm. and he's like the only thing that saves me is. He goes, I am not a nice person if I don't work out. Right. If I don't do MMA and kick the bags and the stuff he does, he goes, I have to do that every day. He goes, he goes, I have, he has a food addiction problem. He talks about that, you know, and he's like, I have to, I have to exercise. Like, it's just what I do. Like you, you're at that level, you know, and, and that's really cool, but you, you can enjoy it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and usually there's um, a progress. There's, 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 it's, it might not be I enjoy it the first time. But as right. my body evolves, mm-hmm. as my capability and skill set improves because of my consistency, it's like, wow, I was able to do that today. Oh, wow. For, look at me. I did 45 minutes today. Let's say I started at 50% of my potential mm-hmm. on my fitness journey. Aim for 51% tomorrow. Yes, 100%. 51 and a half. Like, come on, you could do it. You know, like, get your ass in gear a little bit. Part of this is just willpower. I can engage some willpower to move. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I need to ask Source for help with that, too. So people that go to the gym, where they go to fan it, you know, fan it fitness. (laughs) I put the words (laughs) around. Planet fitness. Judge free zone. I say get... A gym membership that's hefty. Yeah, so you have to use Don't it. Don't do the $8 one or whatever. I mean, I, I, if, if Planet Fitness is all you can afford, perfect. Cool. If that, that then you can get that. And if you love going to Planet Fitness, that's awesome. But we need to make sure that people understand this. Get a gym membership that's hefty, that's a good amount. Mm-hmm. And get a nice gym that you love going to that feels good. Try different gyms out. They'll let you try them out for free. Yep. See how you feel. Walk around, enjoy it. Use the restroom. Do all the things that you would do in that time. Use it as an exploratory. And you'll, you'll go like, oh, this feels like home. Very good, yeah. It, I think that about our gym all the time. Yes, all this the time. Feel, yeah. This is like family-oriented. It's, family, it feels, it's very family-oriented. The, feels, the owners like are very home. nice. It's yeah. a smaller gym, but it's very beautiful it's, in that it's, sense. Yeah. It's new. It's wide open space. We were, we were working out today light. and talking to the owner for yeah. it long time the other day i was sitting talking to the owner and his wife right you know so they're very accessible very it's really cool it's a cool yeah. gym they got modern equipment yeah it's, it's smaller but they've got showers all that and that's the gym that resonates for us mm-hmm. you know yeah, so you I brought want, me to that gym, i want I to love. be there yeah. i want to be there so find a gym that you love now when you come into the gym because we're being real practical it doesn't have to be 45s on each side olympic deadlift moves we, we know somebody that used to irritate me. I'm really working on not being irritated, but just does like a whole body workout with the little machines. Mm-hmm. Just their personality, I'd say. Not what totally, they do. But, totally. But what program resonates with you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's exploratory too. You've got to figure out what your body is capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Often, we enter the gym and we don't know what the heck we're supposed to do. So excellent resources for us are just YouTube. Excellent resources for us are, um, you know, even the, 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 the equipment that's in the gym. I like to tell the clients that we're walking a pretty thin line when it comes to risk reward in the gym. And the undercurrent of my presence in the gym is I'm here to improve my body. I want the reward. Not to injure it, but improve out. it. Yes, right. I'm not here to cross that line and get into the, this is risky. Mm-hmm. Now I'm, I'm like tiptoeing into I'm going to get hurt. Yeah, we can see the gym fell videos. <laughs> All the time. Yeah, and we, other people call that ego lifting. Mm-hmm. And then some circles would call that lifting with Satan. If I'm lifting <laughs> with my ego, you know, it's like, it's like I'm not lifting with God. You know, mm-hmm. I'm lifting with the part of me that's closed off mm-hmm. and judgmental and needs to be bigger than you. And, yeah, and, and so. I'm not there for other people. I'm there for me. What, but like, 
you that's why I think trainers are so good because they can walk you through that program. Absolutely. And, and you can Absolutely. try different trainers. You can go up to the gym owner, you can w- walk up to you and you could be like um and don't feel like you need I feel I've had a lot of people that feel pressure like they need to go with the one that they did a one workout with. No, you can you should You should try. Yes. You should you should say I'm going to try three or four different ones and see which resonate. Yeah. With you. you should be able to vote with your feet. Yes. So if I don't like this trainer, I'll go to the next one. And, and an excellent, excellent tool, Jay. Sorry, I kind of jumped over that. No, that's perfect. I'm paying for a service when I hire a trainer. A good trainer is able to guide me on my own fitness journey. I'm here for the journey. Like, I'm here for the experience. That's what I like to tell the clients. Welcome to your 55-minute experience. And it's yours. It's for you. It's catered to your skill set. It's catered to your body. It's catered to your needs and your goals. So it's very helpful to get an educated individual that can walk me through that process, especially if I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Yeah, and, and, and ego is a big thing. I've seen trainers, and we've gone through, mm-hmm. and you've known mm-hmm. some, gone through where it's like, this is the way I train, and you're going to follow my program. Yeah, get put heavier weight on there. This yeah, is what let's I do. Put, hey, let's do four reps, six yeah. reps. You don't need all that no, stuff. And I have, you're not doing Olympic. I have some clients, so their goal is, is, is weight loss. I have some clients, their goal is maintain. I have some clients, their goal is um, uh, increase endurance and stamina. And I have some clients where their goal is I need to put on weight. Yeah, so like if, 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 if I'm coming to you and saying, hey – um, I love my number one thing in my whole life is, uh, snowboarding. Mm-hmm. And so I don't want to have an injury when I snowboard and I want to be able to do the, I want to be a great snowboarder when I snowboard. Absolutely. So all year long, I want to train with you mm-hmm. because my f- most fun physical activity is this. Yeah. You know, so if you like horseback riding, you know, my, my girlfriend absolutely loves horseback riding. And so if you like horseback riding, why would you not? train that way like you know yeah. oh i need to get up and off the horse i need to be able to be agile my back needs to be good you know so find the thing you love physically and then train around that you know what I mean? if you like martial arts yeah. you know you can do as long as you don't go to like some crazy place there's places that will do training very lightly and you can mm-hmm. roll bjj with yep. older people you know that don't want to get injured there's so many things that you can do you know in in, in a gym setting so whether you're using machines weights kettlebells whether you just want to do cardio run you know yeah, yeah we say what the, type of percentage do you like to look at that like cardio versus weightlifting and all that let's get into that a little bit it's difficult to put a percentage on it if i had to i would say um that's just dependent upon my goals and the direction i want to head in right if so I if, I, if i was a snowboarder like a, you are a snowboarder yeah that's your number one thing for the year what 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 would you train somebody in doing snowboarding obviously we'd be working out a lot of legs mm-hmm. there may be some lateral movements involved because mm-hmm. i'm in a squat position heels to toes basically the entire day on a snowboard mm-hmm. uh so there'd be a lot of legs involved but also stamina and endurance i don't want to go down two runs and collapse and be done mm-hmm. you know i want to enjoy it so I need to be conditioned enough. So we're also now we're talking about conditioning and, and stamina. Could you? And I don't so think this is wrong good, to say, but you train somebody that's a skier. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. And yeah, we, and so he's going to want to do things start, that's going to help. We him. start training for the next ski season year round. Mm-hmm. Like we're always training for the next ski season. Right. And a lot of that is the same. It's edging. It's it's lateral movement. Are my knees healthy? My quadriceps, my glutes, my, my, uh, my hamstrings, can they maintain mm-hmm. the stance for four hours, for six hours? Can I be in a squat position? And you've had, you talked about maintenance where you've had clients that say, you know, I just want to do something healthy. This is not my priority. No, I want but to I know come that in. this is what I need it's to important do. For, it's important for my body, but I don't want to be thinking about this the rest of the day. Mm, yes. And that's important too. It's just every, a good trainer will cater the goals We'll cater to the client's goals mm-hmm. in a safe environment. Mm. It's like, let's head in that direction. You have a real goal. Okay, your real goal is two pounds of weight loss per week. Fantastic. Let's head in that direction. Yeah, and I think, so maybe you can't afford a trainer. So we have those people. So the next best thing is fitness classes. Absolutely. Because what do you have? A group have, environment. Yes, and you have accountability. You can work with the, the person that's doing that or the people that are doing it. I like to equate this to the recovery groups. Fitness classes and recovery groups. And I think you could probably 
have conversations in you because you have to be going to a recovery group. Like if you're not going to a recovery group, that's and you have an addiction, you need to be going to a recovery group. I mean, that's number one. You know, and you said that was more more instrumental. Mm-hmm. What do you think about like asking someone in the recovery group to go on walks with you? Oh, phenomenal! If, yeah, you, yeah. if you're friends with them and you like them, yeah, uh, if, go to a fitness class together. If my energetic vibration is powerful enough to promote health and well being, now times that by two. Two energetic vibrations going down the same path on the same journey seeking the same goal Mm -hmm. is more powerful than just one so it's actually amplified the enjoyment of the workout the enjoyment of the walk the enjoyment of the fitness group class if i share that with someone like-minded someone like vibration it's wonderful yeah and if you're if you're walking where you're able to talk, that's level two cardio. Mm-hmm. Level two cardio, you lose weight at level two. Mm-hmm. You're boosting. You're not going to get an injury at level two cardio. So if you have a, somebody that you really enjoy and you guys can talk about recovery and you can you know have that friendship and you guys make a commitment to like, you know, we live close to each other, so we're going to go walk every day or three times. You know, we're just going to meet at this time. You know, I'll meet at your house one time. You meet at your house or maybe however the walking thing is. Take some time to invest in that. And I think the recovery group, the people that are there, there's other people that are looking. They just need a little nudge. Yeah. They want to join a fitness class. They, they, you know, maybe you can get, you can say, hey, I, I found a really good trainer. You know, maybe we can, you know, but it's kind of expensive. Can we train together or something? You train multiple people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like husband I'll do, and wives I'll and do stuff. group trainings or, yeah. or two. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, again, the tool is available for you. You just have to be willing to seek it out. Right. I don't think God asks too much of us. He just asks <laughs> that we seek him. And me seeking health and wellness is a way for me yes. to seek that alignment, to seek that oneness, to seek that. Uh, I can be of greater purpose to others if my body can handle the task at hand to perform the service. You told me I want to take care of my, this meat suit for as long as possible. Because then I can be of service to others for as long as possible. And then getting together with someone in, in, um, in a recovery group or like-minded people and sharing that experience is very powerful. People fall in love with fitness classes, with group classes, mm-hmm. that group vibration, the collective mm-hmm. idea. We're all heading in the same direction. And we it could be any – it, it could be – Tai Chi, it could be jazzercise, oh, hit yoga, classes. hit class, uh, hit, hit group classes. Class oh, that's tense, awesome. man. Yeah. yeah, I've done a lot of that. I yeah, did, you've done I took a lot a, of that. I yeah. took a college class like that when I was in school. That's awesome. It was a workout class as a group, and we were close. We were a tight group. And there, there's there's running groups. There's so many. Yeah, of you that. push each other. You just got to do some research online. Cycling group. All you got to do is get online, mm-hmm. Google whatever city you're in, cycling club or cycling group, mm-hmm. and an entire list will pop up. You get the phone number and just show up. They have those orange theories yep. where you can go in there and it tells you kind of, they, my they partner, walk you through. My partner loves the orange theory. Yeah. She took me once. I don't think I'll go back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's different. It was awesome. It was just my yeah, they, They've got this new thing that we're doing, you know, that's hits in a sauna, mm-hmm. you know, that my girlfriend and I are doing. There's so many different things that you can do. You just have to prioritize it. You have to say physical health. In the last episode, we talked about yes, this. Yes. Physical health has to be a priority for my recovery. Yes, yes. One other nice way or another nice perspective of that same idea is, well, you know, a long time ago, a long time ago, I made a handshake commitment with the universe that I want to feel good all the time. Going on a fitness journey. Mm-hmm is part of me upholding that commitment. I love that, yes. I'm not going to feel good Mm -mm. when I'm not working out, when I'm not taking care of my health. I don't feel good, and I die earlier. So I miss the journey. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no, no, this is is part of my commitment. This is part of the reason I manifested in human form, is to feel good, enjoy it. I have to take care of this body in order to do that. Yeah, it's so good. And when I walk in the room and I look the way you look, or I look the way I look, that resonates with others. Mm-hmm. They instantly know I have discipline because they instantly know I'm in shape. 100%. It doesn't take nothing 
to mm-hmm. get where I'm at. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of dedication. Well, it took a lot of, a lot of hard work to kill yourself. Correct, yeah. It took a lot of cheeseburgers, a lot of yes, milkshakes. Yes, yeah, so now we're redirecting, it's, we're redirecting that hard work. It's hard to die fat and obese. Mm-hmm. It's a miserable death. It's also hard to live an in-shape, accountable life. Pick your heart. Yeah, if you've, if you, if you, let's, how many fifths of alcohol, if you put them in, would you have a 55-gallon drum? Oh, yeah. If yeah. you put it up, to, yeah, I mean, look at that. Oh, like, look God. at a huge 55-gallon yeah. drum and be like, I drank all this. Easily. And, no wonder I'm. <laughs> and, and then another nice twist in perspective is I would spend how much a month on that addiction. Oh, yeah. On that addiction. Oh, that's good. I would yeah, that's empty really good. the I didn't bank account. Yeah. I would empty my bank account because I needed to get more. Mm-hmm. So let, even on a small scale, let's say caffeine. Mm-hmm. When I first sobered up, I knew that this is, I'm really going to show my shorts here, but I'm okay with, you know, I'll, I'll be a little vulnerable, but it's comical. I, I, I loved cocaine and alcohol. That was just, I could go forever and I didn't black out because of the cocaine. When I sobered up, I needed the caffeine. I had a lot mm-hmm. of caffeine. I was drinking three Red Bulls a day, Jay. I had it built into my monthly budget. I spent $216 a month. On Red Bull. On Red Bull. Uh, that's crazy. Yes. So now remove the alcohol. Mm-hmm. Let's say remove the Red Bull. My brother helped me with that one. He's like, switch to coffee, you idiot. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, Way <laughs> much a cup of coffee is like 25 cents if yeah. I buy a, four, a $4 ground coffee. Yeah. Anyways. Boom. Now I have a personal trainer. I, I made a, a, a sacrificial decision mm-hmm. that's going to benefit future Dwayne later. And I was able to budget money to help create a fitness journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so just the cutting out the alcohol alone is enough to pay for a personal trainer. Oh, 100%. Uh, let's get into, let's, get, let's focus on nutrition because yeah. you're, you're really good with this. You've helped me out a lot in this. Um, when it comes to fueling your body, yeah. and pe- we've all heard this before, but I, I kind of want to take a different approach with this. And you said something that I, it really resonated with me, slow suicide. Mm-hmm. So you get to make a choice every single day, once a day, twice a day, three times a day, snacking at night, 100 times a day, however many snacks or whatever. <laughs> you, get, you make a choice to commit suicide or not you yeah. know, when, you're, when you're eating food. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I, I, again, I made a handshake commitment with the universe that I want to feel good all the time. How do I feel? After a 2,000 calorie meal with sugar and fat and processed cheese and processed meat that lasts in a package for three months, how does meat stay good in a package (laughs) for three months in the grocery store or my fridge? It's preservatives. It's packed with salt. It's it's, it's killing me from the inside out, and it's slow suicide. Mm -hmm. So I'm going against my handshake commitment with the universe because I don't feel good. No. When I eat that way. And a cool part of that handshake commitment is once I realize how good I can feel from taking responsibility and taking positive action in regards to my nutrition, I'm not interested in going back. No. no yeah, I'm same, not interested yeah. in feeling shitty. And, shade and my, my number one addiction is food addiction. Me too. Now. And, and, and I, I mean, I, I do cheat meals and stuff like that, but I, I would never go back to the old way of eating. And I've noticed a huge difference, to get real practical, when I eat, if I go to an Italian restaurant, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which I love, and I eat a ton of carbs, I can eat the 2,000 meal, yep. and I'm hungry two hours later. Where if I eat one of my meals, I have to like almost make myself eat the next one. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still, if I eat, get enough protein and stuff like that. I'm a big guy. I need a lot yep. of protein. But, yep. um, and you could look at my fridge right now. I have a big thing of ground beef in there, organic you know, grass-fed ground beef, and I have a big thing of chicken made, you know, and then I have cans of beans or what, whatever I want to do yeah. with it, you know, but yeah. um, salads, if I want to make, I can make, I, I call them, my favorite thing to do is BFS, big fucking salad. <laughs> it's like a Seinfeld. And I'll it's put a, taco meat on top, yeah, I'll put funny. chicken on top. Yeah, yeah it's me a too, Seinfeld me thing. too. I don't want a but, little salad, I want a big salad. <laughs> yeah, I want a big salad, but I'll cut like, I, I get into it, like jalapenos, different peppers. Lovely. Oh, yeah. You know, I got the the keto. They have these keto protein, like, chicken chips I crunch up mm. and put on there, you know. Perfect. And then, Perfect. you know, I, I had a little bit, just a little bit of cheese, you know, all that stuff. And, and, and just, it feels so good when you eat a big fucking salad. Yeah. 
you know, and then you know it's like, yeah, you know, and, and I get not the super sugary dressing, no. olive oil, no. you know, you need oils and all that stuff, fats and oils, put an avocado, half yes, avocado perfect. on there, which you've taught me, perfect. which now I love, I, I did not like avocados. And you would tell me years ago, you're like, you need to eat avocado, like half avocado. Yeah. You know, like you eat a half avocado in the day and uh, then another half, uh, yeah. you eat one whole avocado One whole a day. avocado a day. But meals two and three have a half avocado. It's a superfood. And then I read, it was real funny. There's the books right there. These called the Law of One books. And it's like, it's a spiritual thing. But they were talking, and this is woo-woo. People may not believe this, but I thought it was interesting. You had told me that, and then I was reading the book, and they were like, well, when aliens came down here, they gave avocados, and that's like an alien food, and it's like the perfect food for you. Now, that's woo-woo. Whatever, don't believe that. I got little alien heads here and everything else. It's fun for me, conspiracy theories, all that. Science has proven avocados are like one of the best things you can eat. Yeah, yeah. So it has the perfect fat. So, you know, and you taught me that. And now I love avocados. I can't wait to to put the half avocado in with my eggs, you know, in the morning (laughs) or whatever. So diet. There's so much controversy with this. Yes, yes, I'm a fucking carnivore. (laughs) Fuck people that eat meat. I'm vegan, you know. Right, right. And I have friends on all sides. Me too. I have a really good friend that's she's vegan and very kind and very loving and very supportive of animals. And I love her for that. And it's really cool. And she's not she's been vegan for years and does a really good job on it. And then I have friends that are carnivore. Oh yeah. And all they eat is meat and they've done great on that. So how how do you encourage people to find what works for them? It's a fascinating adventure that is very specific per the individual. It's important that we say you and I we're not registered dietitians. Yeah, of course. So yeah, hundred percent. Legally, we have this no is what right. We hear yeah, what we're doing. We're, we have no right telling anyone. What this they is bro sh- science. Should be eating. <laughs> however, no. Not, we, however, we have tons of practical experience, mm-hmm. and we can offer. Yes. Uh, our experience mm-hmm. with what nutrition has worked for us. But we're, we're not licensed nutritions, mm-hmm. and it's very important if someone is serious about getting their blood done and finding uh, uh, potential allergies. Mm-hmm. Did you know you've been eating bread for 18 years, but you're extremely allergic to it? <laughs> and, yeah, gluten. Yeah, and, you're uh, right. Oh, man, you're just inflamed all when, over. When, when I Did cut you know bread out, that was what inflamed huge, me. Huge And that's shift. what I crave the most. Yeah, me Isn't too. Isn't that funny? Me too. So, so it is important to say, seek the appropriate help. If you're sincere, uh, uh, go for it. Pay a, uh, a, a licensed dietitian to help you out. Find a, a, a nutrition plan specific for you. Some of our practical experience that has worked really well, you know, is we just get out of the debating society. Mm-hmm. I don't want to debate, oh, keto is best. Adkins is best. No, no. Intermittent fasting is best. If you're not doing intermittent fasting, you're not, you know, fit. Um, those are all just health fads, and, and they come and go. So it's important for me to take responsibility for my own nutrition plan. My, and that's what I like to call it. I like to call it a nutrition plan. I don't like to call it a diet because of the connotation. Just die. I'm going to die. i got to die it. I'm going to die if I eat this. So it's not a diet. It's a nutrition plan. Human beings are the only creatures on planet Earth that can sacrifice or bargain with the future. I'm going to make a sacrificial decision now, a a nutrition-based decision now that's going to benefit future Dwayne later. Mm. Dogs can't do that. Wolves can't do that. Wolf will eat 40 pounds of meat in one sitting. And throw up, yeah. If I ate 40 pounds of meat, my intestines would explode. I'd die. However... Basically, you're a biochemical experiment. You have to experiment with what works best for you. What works best for me is eating six small portioned meals a day. Protein is always involved. Depending upon what I'm trying to do with my body, gain weight, maintain my weight, or lose weight, right. we, we manipulate the protein size. The first three meals of the day also incorporate carbs and fats, I need the carbs and I need the fat. Yeah, you're, you have energy. real low body fat. Yes, so low so body you fat. Need, you have to have the carbs. Necessary to have the carbs. It's often, especially for young females, mm-hmm. to get trapped in this Instagram model, whatever, uh, delusion. Yes, delusion and say, no carbs, don't eat any carbs. You'll be thin if you just don't have carbs. It's like, well, all you are is thin. You need mm-hmm. some carbs. It's quick sugar. It's quick fuel. 
and I'm going to use it, especially at the beginning of my day. Yeah, I, I like Paul Check, he, and he's a registered all kinds of stuff. Um, and you guys, it's, it's Check Institute is what he calls, and he trains. And he said something I thought was really, he's very spiritual too, which I love. He said something that I thought was really good. He said, if it's super healthy food and you're craving it, yeah, he's like, you have to look at your diet as kind of like seasons in nature. Because mm-hmm. nature teaches us everything. Yes. So spring, summer, fall, winter, maybe for a while you're craving a lot of protein. Mm-hmm. And then maybe for a while, you know, rice is some, like I crave rice for a long time, you know, really good organic rice. And so I incorporated some chicken and rice, you know, and, and I was craving asparagus. So I'm not going to fault myself every single day for eating chicken, rice, and asparagus. And I love the meals and I ate them every day. Yeah. That's awesome. Right now I'm not doing that, but it's like, well, if you crave, if you're craving fruits and vegetables, and you and, and you intuitively know that that's where you need to be at, then do that that's for a so while. That's so powerful, man. You know, yeah, but but so your, body knows, your body knows. Your higher self. Yeah. If we're going to take the spiritual, your higher self knows. How present do I have to be to tap into my mm-hmm. higher self, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to my nutrition? Mm-hmm. After that um, orange theory hit that I did with my wife, mm-hmm. my body said, "Excuse me, my body said, you need a ribeye." And pasta. So we got stir-fry noodles and put a ribeye right on top. Mm, delicious. Phenomenal. But I was not, with not the game plan right. for the evening. That was not the meal I was planning to eat. Mm-hmm. But with that God conscious, that presence, mm-hmm. and being able to listen to what my body needs. But that stuff is all, that those things were good for you. Absolutely. And, and you needed Absolutely. them in that time. It wasn't yeah. like I'm like, my body well, was I need a Hershey me. bar. I need a Mountain Dew. I need a honey bun. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and I need Jack in the Box. And then after Jack in the Box, I'm going to go to KFC. <laughs> Not to confuse the, what I need with my ego. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need a blueberry cheesecake yeah, yes, right now. Right now, like, yeah, I have 100%. So, so, yeah, listening to your body is a fantastic tool, but I need to be in the appropriate place to do that in a healthy way. Yeah, the salad thing is my thing now. I love it. I love so, it. So I've been eating really big salads with meat on top. You know, and bacon or whatever, I'll cut the bacon up and put it on there. So, but that's my thing right now. But before I was eating, like I said, chicken, chicken and rice, rice and yeah. asparagus, and then I went to ground beef for a little while, you know, red meat. Um, and maybe that's not your thing. And I've known the guy that owns Whole Foods, mm-hmm. you know, he, he's pretty much like vegetarian type, you know, not vegan, but kind of, you know, but he has eggs and he has, uh, he likes to eat eggs. Uh, my, one of my really good friends, he's vegan. And, but he'll eat eggs and honey, you know, but he has a thing against animal murder and all that stuff, you know. So if you if your spirit resonates with that, then that's what you eat. Just make sure you're getting enough, you know, find the pea proteins or whatever you need mm-hmm. to do, the yeah. vegan proteins. Soy. You know, make sure you get the protein in there. But you're, you, you can tell yourself what you need. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, to echo, you're just a biochemical, a biochemical experiment. I love I'm that. experimenting yes. with what works best for me. It was rice and chicken. Mm-hmm. Now it's big salads and protein. Mm-hmm. And maybe in a year from now, it's not going to be either of those things. It's going to look different. Yeah, maybe so, I'm just eating vegetables. Who knows? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We don't know. So start listening to the body. Start paying attention to what feels best after I've eaten it. How do yes, I feel after I? Great. How do I feel after I ate the meal? After mm-hmm. I have ground turkey and rice right now with a half avocado my abs still show i still i feel lean i don't feel bloated i feel like i'm ready i also feel mentally focused because of the carbohydrates and you were doing sweet potatoes there for a long time sweet potatoes my body loves sweet potatoes i respond really well to sweet potatoes i don't respond so well to normal rust rustic potatoes right um white rice my body loves white rice boom Mm. instant fuel Instant sugar, instant source. My brain synapses increase, so I'm more mental focus. Brown rice, not so much. My, my, the germ on the brown rice causes me to bloat. It's mm-hmm. harder for me to digest. So it's just about learning what your body likes and then also playing with the frequency of meals. Mm-hmm. I know that I can increase my metabolism by having more frequent, smaller meals. I'm not having one or two big meals a day right. and then slowing down my metabolism because my body doesn't really know when my next source well, of fuel is coming. I mean, I'm like an a, a old Ford truck and you're like a Ferrari. So you're going to fuel that differently. You yes. know what I mean? Yes, yeah, we so, need different fuel. Yeah, yeah. that's one, one thing I've learned. I've tried the six meals. I've tried, I've tried all different kinds of things. 
And right now I'm doing more intermittent fasting with keto. You're kind of like a Range Rover. Bro. Yeah, I'm kind of like a Range Rover. Like, yeah, yeah. You're like a fancy. But runner. but I mean, it's like that's what's working for me now. So <laughs> yes, and, yes. and how I know, and this is very important for everyone, I think, especially if you're getting in age, do your blood work. It's so cheap. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it, it's you can you can even do it online now, where yeah. the, you can and then go to the lab and then they'll give you. It's like a hundred bucks. Yeah, they send it to you in the mail. You just yeah, send yeah, it back. you send it back. They have so many different things like that, and and you can tell. If you, if you eat a certain way for a few months, get your blood work done, see what it was like compared to the last blood work. Yeah. You know, and then you'll be able to tell if you're off or not. If you're super highly inflamed, mm. your insulin levels are through the roof. Yep. You get your insulin, and, you get And I'm lipids, fixing to get my blood work, so I'm going to be able to see. I went keto last time. Inflammation went down. Everything was good. So I've kind of stayed that. So I'm curious to see what it is now. And even people, practitioners of keto say don't stay on it for very long. So, you know, doing, you know, carnivore may help you. And I think all carnivore is, is just an elimination diet. Sure. So it's like, you know, meat's not very inflammatory. So if you're just eating meat and that's it and water and you, you've just eliminated all kinds of shit. So just play around with that it. That makes perfect You know, like sense, corn yeah. is horrible for me. You know, like real, those real carby stuff. You know, I don't like, I don't do well with Russell potatoes either. Mm -hmm. I feel lethargic and tired afterwards. Like I eat a pasta, you know. Um, so let's close in this. We'll, we'll do this, this last one, mindful movement, um, mm. in physical life, deep breathing. You talked about breathing before, uh, mindful practices. Maybe it's a form of affirmations or meditation, yoga, these present moment awareness and getting connected with your body. Yeah. This is the heart of expansion training. It's like, I'm doing both. There's, there's, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's kind of like a parallel evolution mm -hmm. i'm taking deliberate action so i'm intentionally trying to improve my body improve my health but then when i can incorporate a present moment practice in that activity when i can incorporate a mantra i'm wildly successful because i'm connected to the present moment when i can incorporate a prayer god relieve me of my fear god relieve me of my fear God, help me be of service. God, help me. When I can incorporate a present moment practice, an expansion moment practice, parallel with this fitness, sympathetic nervous system engagement, my cells are more responsive mm -hmm. because I'm doing something. My body's moving. My body, cells are excitable. They can expand and contract. When they expand, it's called vasodilation. The blood cells expand, vasodilation. They have a larger surface area. They're bigger. When my body's afraid, my whole body knows it. Mm -hmm. When my body's excited not expansion. and feeling good and opened up, my whole body knows it. So I'm opened up. I'm more susceptible to receive mm -hmm. this new idea this new alignment with source, this new power energy that I'm tapping into, I literally have more surface area to receive this information when my cells are expanded. And I can get in touch with this power that's going to help solve my problem, not just my addiction problem, any fucking problem. So we're literally trying to parallel the both. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an expansion present moment practice while... I'm working out and creating this vasodilation and increasing my surface area. I love that. Yes. I'm more receptible so for yes. change. This magic thing mm -hmm. happens. I'm more, it, it, I can evolve and expand and progress. And I'm more susceptible to that when I'm getting busy and taking action. That's so good. So let's close in this and you've given enough disclaimers. Um, but this podcast is just information for educational purposes only, and it should not replace professional medical advice or treatment. Consult with a healthcare professional. Always. And before you start any exercise nutrition program, especially if you have underlying health conditions or you're on medication, mm -hmm. you need to be able to talk to a doc. And then, like we said, listen to your body and adjust your physical activities accordingly and make sure, like you had said, make sure you're doing it with a mindful practice. Yeah. Enjoy it.